Well, good morning and welcome to Rochester, New York. It's go time, Liz. There's no more practicing now. Absolutely, Billy. Everybody is out here and they are ready to bring their A games. Well, the guys have been getting ready all week long. We're gonna start this week at Chala and we've got some special stuff for you. But first, let's take a look at one of the courses they'll be playing this week. Here's your gotta go course look from Genesee Valley Park. Welcome to hole number one at Genesee Valley Park. It is a beautiful hole, it's 270 feet. You are challenged by the OB pathway on your left and a, the Tournament Central Pavilion on your right. The green is pretty well defined, however, you're gonna have to challenge a very low ceiling if you wanna get yourself onto the green. Hole four at Genesee Valley will give players a good opportunity to get one stroke back on the scorecard. Relatively short hole at 240 feet, players can take a large sweeping hyzer. However, they do want to be aware that within 15 feet behind the basket is an OB cart path. Hole number five at Genesee Valley is another short hole, about 197 feet. However, be aware of the cart path running along the left side. It is very close at the green, about 20 feet to the left of the basket. You can go ahead and take a hyzer shot, but you do run the risk of hitting one of the numerous mature tall trees in your way. At nearly 460 feet, hole number seven at Genesee Valley is no easy shot. You have a few obstacles to avoid once you get down near the green. Pretty open off the pad, you'll be able to unleash a large hyzer. An Anheuser may even work, but if you take the Anheuser line, you will have a bike path to contend with. There are some portable water closets out there. Make sure you avoid those. Hopefully those will not be in play for our tournament this weekend. Hole number nine at Genesee Valley is going to allow players to really open up their arms and see if they can use some of this open air space. Ideally, you want to throw a large hyzer and get it to cut in right before this tall stand of pine trees. The basket is a little bit elevated. However, if you can make it down to the corner, you'll have an easy approach shot to get an easy three. Hole number 11 at Genesee Valley Park, almost 600 feet, a par four, dog leg right. This hole, you have to throw the first shot, make it through kind of a low ceiling, down a hill, to make it out to the big open area so you can have an easy approach and try to get a par four. Okay, welcome to hole number 12 at Genesee Valley. This hole is 306 feet. Major obstacle near the end of the hole with OB within 15 feet of the basket. Be very careful with that high hyzer line. Don't get caught up and throw yourself OB. Hole number 14 at Genesee Park, you can pick your line. There's a hyzer line, there's a straight line, and there's a left to right moving shot. Be aware of the road. It is OB on your right all the way down the fairway. And also be careful on your approach shot and your putt to not land near or on top of that statue as that is also OB. Okay, finishing hole at Genesee Valley, hole number 18 at 567 feet. Multiple shot hole, the first shot, you definitely want to get past that large tree in the center of the fairway to have the easiest shot at the green area. Okay, assuming you have made it to this spot off of the tee pad, hole 18 is an island green and you will take a penalty shot and rethrow from your previous lie should you happen to land not in bounds. A smart player here might choose to lay up before they even get to OB because that OB line is guarded by many, many trees and you are throwing to an island green. Well, all right, we just got back from Genesee Valley, a fun course, also very challenging. I know I had a good time there and I know the players are gonna have a good time there too. Well, it's a temp course and they really wish they could have that course year round. Oh yeah. Well, it's go time. It's the first round for all divisions today and we're at Chala Widener Park. First thing we're gonna do for you, we're gonna go out and we're gonna see some little ones, Liz. Oh yeah, and they are a lot of fun to watch too. Here's some live action from the juniors, MJ1 through MJ4. Hole number 14 and right on the tee, that's Ian Krajna. 
Oh yeah, he's, you know, this is a really long hole. It's placed slightly uphill. It's a huge dog, red, dog leg right at 375 feet. Players are gonna just wanna stay in the middle and work their way down the fairway. Wow, Boy, does he have a release, Billy? Ian just crushed that, and Liz, we're gonna have to be careful. I don't know if you know, but you almost got hit as that disc came in. You yeah, I held it together pretty well. Now, this is, uh, this is 375 foot uphill. And you can see the dads are working with them there. This is little Connell Steel Wagon. This is MJ4 under 10. And how cute are they, Liz? Oh, it's amazing, Billy. These discs look so big in their hands, but they sure can manipulate them. Look at that little guy rip it. Flat and straight. These guys know what they're doing. Oh, boy, was Dad excited about that. And, and you really get the family atmosphere. Sometimes you get those parents that are overcoaching. But for the most part, it is really a great family atmosphere. That's my... Uh, Isaac Meter, and that was a great shot right there. Oh yeah, you know, and especially on this drive, all you're really doing is looking at making your way down the fairway, just stay in the middle. And right in the middle there is the TD son. Boy, talk about practice, and he, you know, we had not get a chance to get out with him much. That's Michael and Zana. This is the MJ4s, we're gonna follow him up here. Beautiful hole number 14 at Chala, just a little 375 footer. Well, here's Michael and Zana. Get around that tree. Oh, that's okay, Liz. You can see the basket from there. Yeah, you know, these players are playing it right in the middle of the fairway just like they should be doing. Well, now just to the right of him, that's uh, Isaac Meter. He's winding up. Oh, we got a little bit of trouble in the trees, but he's on the good side of the tree. Oh, he is disgusted with that shot. He just hated it. Donald Stillwagon, he had a great drive off the tee, Billy. Now he's forced with a little bit of an uphill shot. Not many obstacles to avoid, but... Well, Dad just stepped in and showed him the line. I like that. He just showed him the line, got out, and let Kyle think about it. Oh, a little coaching hey. going on there. Oh, what a run-up. What a throw. Wow, this kid has got a rip. Look at that. And accurate, too. Oh, Dad just loves it. That's going to give himself a birdie, I would say, for these young men. We'll move around now as... Ian Krajna is on the far right side of the fairway, and he has crushed this thing. Oh, well, Dad just talked Ian into a disc change there. Boy, he really matches. He's a good 40 feet past the rest of these little guys. Yeah, he has a trickier line than they do, but he doesn't seem to have much problem with that. Oh, that's a beautiful Anheuser, Liz. Yeah, he's got a lot of height on it, a lot of distance. Oh, Great and shot by Connell's dad got as excited about that one as he did about Connell's shot. Boy, you got to love the camaraderie in this group. Well, trying to get in spot. Michael and Zana making another layup there. We might have just missed that one, Liz. Yep, everybody's making their way onto the green here. Let's see what Ian Krasna can do. No, this is Isaac, actually. Oh, Isaac, Isaac okay. Meter. One Carl, skip. Isaac made a great shot. He's uh, just at the mouth of the green there. Well, we're going to get up to the green now. We've shown you how these little guys drive. This is the future of the sport. Let's go check them out on the putting green. Well, All there. right, Michael and Zana. He's not too far out. He's going to have a... It looks like he run it forehand. Makes a nice shot. He's got his dad there trying not to overcoach our TD, Tony and Zana. Boy, you know he is stressing with everything going on. But what a father taking the time out to walk the first round with his son. Oh, yeah. This is a really great sport to bring parents and kids together, Billy. Well, here's Isaac Meter now. Tough little uphill pot. It's definitely not a gimme. Well, he's giving it enough. Good bid there from Isaac. He just looks disheartened. He didn't like that shot that hit the tree. He's still not over it, Liz. Uh, making his way around back. Boy, what a crusher. Uh, Ian Krasna really oh, yeah, made his a great approach drive. Was beautiful. He ran the chains and he threw a true Anheuser. First, though, Connell Stillwagon's going to step up and check him out. Liz got him a little side on putt action. Well, he throws all of his drive sidearm. He might be as accurate here as there. Wow, look at that. Butter. And Daddy is excited about 375 that. 375 feet and this kid can get a three on it. That's awesome. 10 and under. He tried to stop there. He knew the etiquette and dad told him to come on, but he froze. Oh, good putt Didn't by Ian Didn't bother well. Ian. What a putter. You're seeing the future of our sport right now at the 2011 Junior Am Worlds. This is the MJ4. These are the little guys, 10 and under. Right, and Michael there Anzana is Michael Penzana. What a great, great sport to be at. And the families all together, you can see them here. All right, we've got Will Stafford on the pad right now. It looks like he's gonna try a thumber to this relatively short hole. This is a birdie op, but this green is a very tricky. Ooh, went right past the green. Well, that's right here at the camera, Liz, and 
he's going to have himself one tough putt every bit of 45 feet. All right, now we've got Danny up on the pad. Yeah, Danny Rosanna is uh, looking straight at it. It looks like he's trying to try the, the natural route, and that's a good-looking shot, Liz. Okay, just, just got to make it stick. Oh, it got caught up a little bit and got pushed off the left side of the green. Just touched that one limb, and instead of having an eight-footer now, he's got about a 23-foot huh. uphill putt. Sometimes that one little limb is all you get. All right, Ant Anton Lind on the pad now. Looks like to have putter maybe a mid-range in his hand. He's got to try the same shot. He made it over the limbs, but not enough to stick onto the green. Yeah, he's going to have that tough putt, and I can tell you, there's about 10, maybe 12 mile an hour wind out here, and that little putt with this elevated basket is going to be tough. Now here's Luke Morstead. Yeah, with these guys are going to have to start making it stick on the green. Right, he's taking a much better angle, but that thing's hooking up, and he's going to have to make him a putt from off the edge of the green as well. Well, hole number eight, a beautiful little hole with only 197 feet, but an intricate green list. Oh yeah, you know, it's it's not just on a mound, it's on uh, almost a tiered mound. Well, they call it a little figure eight. We're gonna let them come in. This is the MJ1 under 19. This is the big boys in the juniors division. And there's the favorite right now, Luke. Yeah, Luke Morse said he's rated 975 coming into this event. He's gotta have, you know, he's gotta be playing calm and comfortable. He is a good player, he's proven it. Okay, this is Will Stafford. He's out of North Carolina. He went a little bit long at the green. He's going to be smart and lay it up. That was absolutely a smart shot. As any little lift, he could have had that same putt coming back. And now you can see Anton Lind moving in. He looks very confident. Yeah, Billy, he looks like he's got a face that says, I'm going to run and make this putt. Yeah, he's from Norway. And you know, he's probably checking in every day at the PDJ.com to see how the European Open was turning out. I'm sure he's got lots of friends over there. You know, it was a little bit higher. He had some room to work with behind it, but I'm not sure if he ran it or laid it up, Billy. Yeah, that's, that's that you got to commit, Liz, and these young men are learning how to play. This one here has got quite a bit of skill. This is Luke Morstad. And yeah, I expect him to make this putt with no problem, Billy. Oh, looks like he just went low, and he is also confused why he didn't make that putt. Well, the wind is up, and that will get into your head sometimes. And now we've got Danny Rosanna moving in, and let's see if we can get us a birdie on this card. This is the MJ one's 19 and under. Oh, yeah, he nailed it. That was right in the heart. We're going to let him move in and cut out here, as these guys are going to be fighting all week long. This is only the first round, and it's a marathon this week, Liz. Now this is hole, hole number eight at Chai Lai Widener Park. And this is the first day at the 2011 Amateur and Junior World Championships. All right, we've seen some great shots out there, Billy. Oh, the kids are special. I mean, they can throw the thing long, but it's that interaction with the parents I was really enjoying today. Oh yeah, and you know, it seems like they were really getting a lot of help and they were maybe even working as a team out there. Lots of positivity. Well, the juniors are one thing. The women are here to compete for a world championship as well. They're at Chalai Park at Widener. Here's some live action from the advanced women's division. First round, Tuesday afternoon. Well, we are still with this group. First day, first round. Hole number 13 here at Chala. What a magnificent hole, 303 feet, Liz. Yeah, and they, at the very end, they have to get over a considerably high stack of hay bales. Jennifer Johnstone retains her tee box here after her par on the last hole. Oh, yeah, she's checking that win because it is up. What a versatile player, too. It looks like she's going to throw a backhand here. Now she's got a caddy. I'm guessing she's from the PA area. She's put a good move on that, Liz. Yep, it's going to have to flatten out. It's a little bit left. Might have to deal with some pine trees for her putting approach here. Yeah, she's a little left, a little short of the green. And this is one I want to see. Here's a, a world champ out of Colorado. Here's Paige, Paige Berkus. Boy, what a beautiful really line, low, Liz. Level shot. Yeah, she's going right down the pipe. She, yeah, I think she's going to have a putt. I think she made it past the hay bales. Oh, she cleared the hay bales, and that was just a very nice, level, clean shot right there. Sandal Parrish on the tee now. 303 feet. Number, oh, that could be dangerous. Oh, the wind lifted it up past oh, the first tree. It did get caught a little bit. She's still in the middle of the fairway with a good look at an approach shot, but it's not down on the green near yeah. the other girls. 
Hole number 13, let's get on down to the green and see what it has to hold. Okay, about halfway up the fairway, we have Sandal Parish. Now, she doesn't have a very technical shot, but you have to be aware of the wind that she's throwing it into because she has to get over the hay bales. But as, you, as soon as you throw that disc high up in the air, you run the risk of letting the wind take over. Yeah, and she's dealing with that last hole where she took that into consideration and hit the split rail fence and went back, so. Good looking shot, Liz. Yep, it looks like it's gonna, ooh. All right, she's right next to the pin. She's excited. Oh, great shot there, and she did handle the elements. Let's get on down now as Jen will have an opportunity to get up and down next. Okay, Jennifer Johnstone, she had a good drive. It's just, however, on the other side of the pine trees, we might not be able to get a shot of her, but all she has to do is pitch it out onto the green for a nice, easy three. Yeah, she's only about 45 feet, but she has no line to the basket. She just... Her and Bobby Jones are conferring, and that comes out, and it that's did. okay. It, it caught a little bit of trouble, but it's still near the basket. Now, let's move down now as Paige Birkus will have a putt for birdie on her second consecutive hole. Well, Paige is ready now. Yeah, she's got a birdie opportunity here, and she takes it. Oh, great putt, Paige. Boy, that was just pure confidence right there. Wind's up, not a problem. She stepped right up. She has a chance to be two down. That, that first miss didn't phase her at all. Now, here's Jen. This is for par. That's yeah, definitely a tester. Oh, not a problem. But dunk a dunk, no doubt about it, is she's gonna take her par. And then after a beautiful upshot, really stressing there, starting off tough on the first hole, does not want to go bogey to bogey. No, absolutely not, Billy. There's Sandal Parish for her first par of the day. Oh, and <laughs> again, she just barely gets into that basket, I tell you. No ya. change it needed. It must be karma working on her side. But dunk a dunk for sure. Well, that's a, a group of the women here at the, the Chai Lai Widener course. We're gonna get around the course, Liz. We're gonna try and find a few more groups. This is the advanced division. And let's just see who's gonna be here and who's gonna to try to take home a world champion. Well, we are at hole number seven, beautiful Chai Lai Widener Park. And this is one tough hole without the wind, Liz. Yeah, the wind adds a whole new element to this. 360 foot hole there is a small hump right in the middle it's mainly open there are some larger trees on the outside that you have to avoid but as you go down near the basket it's a little bit downhill and there's some ob surrounding the green well it's just an aesthetically pleasing hole it's beautiful that green looks tucked away it just doesn't look 360 huh but it's gonna play big today we've got a group moving in towards us right now this is a women's advance on its first round here at beautiful chai lai white Anya takes a couple of warm-up swings here. Again, this hole is 360 feet. They have a lot of wind to contend with, and it's a little bit downhill. Yeah, maybe she added one of those things into her equation there, because she might be changing her disc. Well, she could have some clammy hands, too, because it is a nervous shot. It's a dangerous hole. There's wind everywhere. This thing, we've seen Heiser disc turn into Super Anheuser rollers a couple times today. And a good line by Anya. The wind doesn't mess with it at all, but she keeps it down. She's not trying to go crazy. And you can see that it is just one tough round out here today. Yep, now we've got Sherry Bartlett up on the pad. She seems like she's playing pretty confident, confidently today, Billy. She has no stress in her face. All she has to do is keep it in the middle. Well, that's a good smooth pull. And she's going to cut through the wind. Oh, yeah, beautiful flight. Should be able to get up and down from there. But she's got to take a little Anheuser, and that is dangerous in this wind. All right, now here, and her husband, who's caddying for her, Vanessa Kopenheffer. She is, oh, she's going to be punished by the wind a little bit and stay on the Boy, right side. But right she had a nice fence, drive. Between the split rail fence, rolled around the tree, and she's got a good spot to get up and down. Looks like Anya will be out first, and she's going to have a tough up and down with this wind. Anya now looking. She's got a great angle into this green, Liz. Oh yeah, and she's actually set herself up quite well. Uh, it's not that long of a shot. Again, the wind is gonna come into play. But all she has to do is get it down there for a three. It's a little bit low. Well, the wind has took that, and I'll tell you, these girls are doing everything they can. They're taking the wind into consideration on every shot. Absolutely. And it's just a struggle. It's almost not fair in the first round of the other worlds. It's such a long week. All right, Sherry Barlett now is walking up to her shot. Again, she had a perfect flight pattern. It was about three quarters up the fairway here. And she's gonna set herself up for maybe an Anheuser approach here. It looks like she has 
A mid-range in her hand. The Anheuser approach is a little dangerous. She's got a headwind coming in. Left to right, there it comes over us now. Oh yeah, and I can see all those orange OB lines. Well, she has tried to take the hyzer line to avoid it, and that did not work, Liz. Yep, she's gonna have a very tricky second shot here. Well, Vanessa Coppenheffer now looking at possibly taking the box off of this card, and she's doing an incredible low angle Anheuser that cut through the split rail fence around the tree to leave her right yeah, here. Yeah, sure did, Billy. I don't know how it made it through that fence. Well, she's only about 150 feet, but the wind is brutal. Oh, uh, she's definitely out there. She's going to be able to run that for a three easily. Well, she's got a 45-footer into the tailwind, headwind, crosswind, downwind. It's going every it which way. It's crazy out here, Billy. Okay, so out here there's a bunch of large mulch piles that also act as bunkers, and when you find yourself on one, you are on it. That is where your lie is from. You have to go from directly behind your disc, no matter if you're First and second foot are teetering. Well, the wind's got she that, Liz. puts it up and down. She's going to set herself up with about a 30 foot putt there. Okay, we've got Anya Kapinski now. This is going to be for a par. This is a very challenging putt. She is, oh, Billy, I'd say she's about 45 feet away. Yeah, I'd say that's accurate. Do good just to lay this thing, get up and down. You know, she can run it if she keeps it low and coming at a downward angle, but she cannot let it go up in the air. Sounds like a pro talking to me, Liz. Oh, I don't know. She kind of, she had the best of both worlds. She didn't go too far to miss the comeback, but it wasn't really a run. Right. Copen have her up on the pad. Oh, she runs her pad. Oh, she, ah, it was a smart move though. She did putt from her knees to stay underneath the wind. Well, she's gonna have an easy four. These other girls have still got a little work to do. Let's get around and see if the green will expose itself to you. All right, Sherry Barlow now. Now, she didn't leave herself an easy putt either. This wind is just taking people's discs and flying it over the green. This is about a 30-foot putt. She is protected a little bit. It's up in the air. Ow, oh, it touches all sorts of chains, Billy, but falls out the back side of the basket. Oh, it just never had a chance. Oh, it is a heartbreak. All right, Anya, again, it's only a 12-foot putt, but in this wind, it's making it feel like a 40-foot putt, I'm sure. Well, the story of the day is win. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, especially this afternoon. I don't think any of the juniors this morning complained about wind. Oh, good job, Anya. Taking time, resets herself after maybe letting the wind get in her head. All sorts of distractions when that wind's blowing, Billy. Well, allows, has just time for opportunity oh, for bad thoughts right to creep time. in. Good job, Anya. A confident putt. Yeah, and you can see the look on her face. She is glad to be done with that putt and this hole. All right, Vanessa and Sherry finishing up here. Easy little cleanup shots as they move on to the next hole. Well, that's number seven here at Beautiful Child Eye Widener, the first day of the 2011 AM and Junior World Championships. Well, all right, you've got to see some of the women out there. I know they are, some of them are struggling in the wind, but others are getting able to figure it out. Well, it is tough. You know, they're not all pros yet, but they all aspire to be a pro, and they definitely had some problems today. But I saw some great shots really cutting through the wind. You know, and the best part, I think every one of them is still having a good time. Well, let's get out now for, the cl for something special. The Clash, meet the players. Isaac Bromberg, PDGA number... 35166 from East Hampton, Massachusetts. I'd like to say hi to everybody back in Nifa land and the folks at Nonotuck Disc Golf. Ed Hovestad, 29976, and uh, I want to say hi to Joy and Elisa. I'm having a great time. Wish you were here. Hi, my name is Jen Stambro, PDGA number 22955, and I'm from right here in Rochester, New York. I'd like to send a shout out to my parents. Love ya. My name is Diana Gunlock Lane. My PDGA number is 39726. Uh, I said on my card it says Georgia, but I'm really from Texas. And uh, I want to give a shout out to Courtney McCoy. I'm uh, Denise Cameron, 41459 from uh, Syracuse, New York. And a uh, shout out to the Central New York Disc Golf Association. All right. Billy Ray Osborne, PDGA number 4995. I'm from Franklin, Ohio, and good luck to Don, my wife. She's playing the Advanced Masters Women. Hey, I'm Olaf Zeimer. I'm the German. I'm living in Asheville, North Carolina, and uh, proud to be representing my country. My PDGA number is 26556. Hey, Stephen Harrison from Denham Springs, Louisiana, PDGA 31436. 
27. Shout out to Southern National Land and uh, everybody in Baton Rouge. Hi, my name is Mike Lowe, uh, PDJ number 20721 uh, from Austin, Texas. Just want to shout out to uh, the guys at Waterloo and South Austin and the city of Austin. You need to support disc golf. Hi guys, I'm Wendy Booten from Brookfield, Massachusetts. Giving my shout out to NEFA up north. See ya. Hi, I'm Kristen. I'm PDGA number 19476, coming here from Bucks County, Pennsylvania. Hello, Bucks County Disc Golf Alliance, and thank you to my brother Todd over there who's being my caddy all this week. Noemi Bjerkus, 33839. I want to say hi to my husband in Denver, Colorado. Hi, Douglas, I love you. <laughs> Lisa Gallagher, 40381, New Mexico. Uh, thanks, Kirk. If weren't for you, I wouldn't be here. Um, Elfride L.F. Burley from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, the number is 474434. <laughs> <laughs> still trying to get used to this number. <laughs> oh, that's me? all. Okay. Heidi Schaffner, 29850, Savannah, Georgia. Give a shout out to the SDGC peeps. Thanks, guys. Uh, this is Sean Ashleman. I'm uh, from Colorado and uh, PDGA number 17752. And having fun in Rochester. Right, Greg Midas, 20293, Syracuse, New York. Having a great time just down the road here in Rochester. And Loving the weather, loving the sunshine, loving the courses. Good times. Hi, I'm Pat Mells from Canandaigua, New York, and I'd like to, my PDGA number is 45799. I'd like to say hi to my son, Will, who's playing in Parma today. Hi, my name's Carol Silverthorne. I'm from Lorton, Virginia. My number is 15378. <laughs> I, <laughs> I just want to say hi to my family and my friends. Thanks for all the support and getting me here. Hi, I'm Donna Grace from Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and my number is 38786. <laughs> and I'd like to say hi to everybody in Carlisle, PA, and go Grandmasters. I'm Gilda Lane from Tonkanic, Pennsylvania. My number is 45073, and I'm just excited to be here. Yoo-hoo! Well, I'll tell you, it's just wonderful to see all these guys. They're all excited. You can't tell if these guys are throwing good shots or bad shots. No, no. Day one excitement. I know everybody's been waiting almost all year for this to happen, and now it's finally here. Unfortunately, along with the tournament comes a whole bunch of wind this afternoon. Word of the day. We'll see how it progresses on throughout the week, but if you did not have your stable plastic today or your wind knowledge, you suffered. Now, this has been the first day of the PDGA Daily Report from the 2011 Amateur and Junior World Championships here in Rochester, New York. You can tune in all week long. Tell them where we're going to be, Liz. Well, all right, you can check us out all week long, PDGA Daily Report on the front page of the PDGA.com. Now, this is the first day. Tomorrow, we'll obviously have the second day. We've had a promo, we've had the doubles, and we've had the field events. If you've missed any of those, you can go to Clash DVD the channel over at our YouTube site. They'll all be lined up right there for you. You can watch them at your leisure. You can even watch them on full screen. Well, for Clash DVD, I'm Billy Crump. This is Liz Carr. Be sure to stay with us all week long as we're gonna bring a world champion to you right here at the PDGA.com. <laughs>